he fell ill. But they couldn't figure out what is wrong with him. Then he saw a man with a very long face in great misery and angst. A one-pointed mind is something that nobody can stop. If you want to evolve above the intellect, it needs a conscious effort. Five hundred years ago, there was a city of my forefathers who were kings in that area. This city was the richest city on the planet five hundred years ago. Please look it up, it's called Hampi. And uh, suddenly one day Krishna Devaraya fell ill, that was the king's name, he fell ill. And uh, physicians came and examined him in many ways, but they couldn't figure out what is wrong with him. But he was sinking away. Nearly at the doors of death, then he called for his friend and advisor, whose name was Tenali Ramakrishna. Tenali came and he is no physician. He didn't know what to do. So the king sought his help, but he doesn't know what to do, he's not a physician. So confused, he walked away into the town and he was walking around in the marketplace. Then he saw a man with a very long face, in great misery and angst. Then Ali went up to him, hey, what's wrong? Why are you looking like this? He said, I am in the sandalwood business. Because a large stock was available somewhere, I took a huge debt and bought this entire sandalwood. Now if I don't sell quickly, I will be finished. People who have lent me money are not going to leave me alive. The only way I can sell this sandalwood is the king must die. When kings died, always the cremation was done with sandalwood. Nobody else can afford it. So he said, unless the king dies, I'm finished. Then Ali looked at him, the intensity of his misery and angst. He said, wait a minute. He went home, got the money and he bought all the sandalwood. The man was very happy and the king recovered. It's not a joke. You must understand, in moments of anger, in moments of hatred, in moments of fear and angst, your mind becomes one-pointed. A one-pointed mind is something that nobody can stop. Right now, everybody is in this mode, can't point at anything. Because of that is one big confusion. If you have a one-pointed mind, there is nothing which can stop that. This was one of the important aspects of Gautama's expression, that he brought this into people's lives. You can take charge of your life if you take charge of your mind. I'm asking you also, if you take charge of your psychological process, you being blissful, is it a challenge? No. Oh. You're trying to take charge of somebody else's mind. One day, Sankaran Pillai and his wife went to the marriage counselor. So Shankaran Pillai introduced and said, we really have a wonderful marriage because we have such a fantastic partnership and I'm the silent one. So this whole process of rising above the mind, which means a Buddha,
becoming a Buddha. You must understand that's not his name, his name is Gautama Siddhartha. Buddha is a state. That means you're… if you're above your intellect, you're a Buddha. If you're in the intellect, you're a non-stop suffering human being. If you're below the intellect, we can call you a Buddhu <laughs> So, as evolution, as creatures, we were below the intellect. Slowly, we evolved into the intellect. Now, if you want to evolve above the intellect, it needs a conscious effort. Don't wait for Mother Earth to do it for you. It may happen after million years, but you won't be there. You should download uh, an app that we have. It's a free app, anybody can download. It's called Sadhguru app. Here there is a practice called Isha Kriya. This is a simple way of bringing awareness to what is your body and what is you, what is your mind and what is you. Once there is a tiny little bit of space between you and your body, between you and your mind, this is the end of suffering.